Blog Talk Radio. Yo! It is Sunday, November 5th, 2017. School is officially end. Yo, what was like the early fade? What was the early fade, though? I see, I see a visual like Urban Expressions and something coming with that. Word? <laughs> urban Expressions. <laughs> Damn, that's what right? That's right. Right. <laughs> uh, what's up, ladies and gents? What's it, good? You are, you are back again. It is the Schools in Podcast. I am Mitch, and you, I am joined again, once again. By my always illustrious co-host, but Aaron is a little bit more like like Portishead, kind of mellow, right, yeah. Aaron? I'm like a little mellow, I'm a, little, yeah, I'm a real low-fi type kid, you know. Low-fi, right? <laughs> yeah. I think and. I think my uh, my um my co-host aunt might might be a little bit more sneaker pimpish. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> what up? No, what up? What up? Be, you... <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that. What's this? What's, what's talk about it. So welcome to the show. Um, today's show is called. The trip hop calls and it wants its aesthetic back show. Okay, and I know yeah. that sounds weird to people because they're like, "What the fuck does any of those? What the fuck any of those words mean?" <laughs> <laughs> um, today is our show dedicated to trip hop, and we're gonna talk about the trip hop genre and its origins and where it comes from and kind of why and um. And then we'll do a little breakdown, and you'll figure out why we're talking about trip hop and how. Well, trip hop is an offshoot genre of, like a subgenre of hip hop, so it's pertinent to our show anyway. We had to talk about it sooner or later. Hey, you know what? We gotta talk about everything sooner or later on this show. Thankfully, sooner than later. Thankfully, sooner than later. So, um, trip hop, again, as I just said, is, it's much like hip hop in that it has a whole bunch of influences and conglomerates that kind of merge together to make it. It's sometimes called down tempo as well, and it originated in the early 1990s in the UK. And for everybody that doesn't know what the UK is, that's the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is England, people. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's England. I like to watch a lot of uh, BBC. I love the BBC. Bring it down like that. <laughs> well, because some folks don't even know what that means. It's kind wow, of sad. Really? But yeah. It's an educational I show. I don't think okay, our, yeah, yeah. I don't think our listeners our listeners know what the UK is. I would like to say. I hope so. Well, just in case somebody who is not quote unquote our listener is stumbling by. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The United Kingdom, the 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 place that that um shows sovereignty to the Queen. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where trip hop <laughs> originated from, and it and it kind of got a lot a lot of its start in Bristol, England, a nice little place not too far outside of London. Um, and it kind of fuses you know hip hop and funk and what's called dub, which is like a, a Jamaican form of music. Right. Mm-hmm. And if people don't know, again in the UK, there's a lot of um. Jamaican and West Indian, you know, um, Afri- people of African descent that wound up there. 
because um, again the islands all those West Indies islands um, are also ruled by England so much like how Puerto Rico is or like the Virgin Islands is to, to America that's how those mm-hmm. islands are to England and so if you want to go back to quote unquote the mainland a lot of those Africans who were Jamaican and from the islands found themselves, you know, winding up back in England because that's that's the mainland for them. Mm, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. So you so get a that, lot of that influence. That's where the that's where the um, whole Bristol Sound thing comes from. Well, that's where where you're gonna get an African like the African influence from the music because they are going to start borrowing and pulling in music from African Americans across the pond right as they, as they call it um, is, that the, is, own... is that like the defining line between like the breaks used in hip hop and the breaks used in like trip hop because they use like if I listen to like you know some records where like the breaks don't sound the same all the time yeah like I think well because they had a break like in the beginning their hip hop a lot of what their hip hop was it was like it was kind of following along the same lines as ours was really they had yeah. the component you know and if you if you have you know care to look this up you know you'll see it um they 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 had the components the same way we did like they they were following the elements they had the DJ they had the, the graffiti they had the b-boying and they had, you know, the rap, just like we did. It was done in their in their way, but it, they were still following, you know, our breakbeat because trip hop is still based off breakbeat. Yeah, it is. But that's what. But see, that's what I was saying. Like, as far as like the breakbeats they use, like I think they get like they get their stuff from different. Like we get a lot of they do from like for, different for places. That, yeah, like people in hip hop, a lot of times we get our stuff from like, like you said, funk samples funk or even songs. like you know, yeah. a, mm-hmm. a jumping R R and B type record or something like that, you know. So um, right, but they yeah they they kind of pull from more like like electronic music, you know, like mm. different kind of places, not just not just funk and soul, but a lot of different experimental places. Like Aaron and I are talking off air and um and. and and we're talking about off air about how they like to use all these weird sounds and all this like and and it's it, it's more tone and it's a lot darker. Yeah, whole lot, whole lot, whole lot, a whole lot darker than 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 the kind of hip hop that that we were dealing with. But again, um, we had an American DJ, DJ Shadow that was kind of working you know like one of the early pioneers of trip hop too and he's American he's not you know from England so I mean you still have a large American influence because a lot of you know people okay they take our music and they do something very very different with it Mm -hmm. and then we take it back and do something else which we'll talk about in another second (laughs) but um so like in the early nineties, um like in, in in Bristol, you had a lot of these people as they were talking about from our you know, from our culture that were like basically passing through Britain because that was a large port for the the trans uh, trans Atlantic slave trade. So there was a lot of us hanging out there, mm-hmm. you know, and that wound up there. And so what they what they did, they called their things that they pulled together, like for hip hop, they called them sound systems. And that was like the early um, origin. That was the hip hop that they were, you know, kind of moving off of. And amongst those, you had like some groups emerging, one of which was what will become Massive Attack. Who used to be called the Wild Bunch in the beginning. And then 
Tricky, who was part of Massive Attack, he kind of got frustrated with, um, I guess, the direction that Massive Attack was going in, and he w- kind of went off on his own. So you have yeah, Massive like, Massive Attack Massive Attack sound is a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I can't even explain it. It's like it's, it's got a, a rock edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's tricky. Like he's got, you know, like more of like a he's, he's got a strong rock edge in there too. Fun lie. It is, but then the next group that came after, cause and all three of the ones that we're talking about now, they were like pretty much the very early pioneers. Um, Massive Attack, Tricky, and then Portishead. Porter's head is is like like the Beatles of that shit. That's the one everybody know. Everybody knows Porter's head. If you love trip hop, most people love Porter's head. Mm-hmm. They, they like the first. They like the first. They only had three. Yep. Mm-hmm. What, the first one is so um. Will we will we um like look at them as like the uh like the first breakout mainstream act? They are. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And they're like the ones that really, really, really made that shit pop. Like pop. Where everybody yeah. was like, oh, this is some shit. What the fuck is this? Interesting. You know? The reason I reason I asked that is because like um like in my experience listening to a lot of that music, like it seemed like um um like, you know, trip hop is usually like uh it's usually like by default a uh, underground genre. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but it it attached itself to a lot of um like type of, it attached itself to a lot of like movies like if you watch like certain movies back in the day like you might hear um a record uh, or a song like at the end of a movie and you like damn what the hell is that you know what I'm saying yeah a lot of those a lot of those early nineties like cult favorites and shit like um, yep or even one? like mid nineties that that like they have a lot of fucking Right, right, you know, yeah. I'm trying like to think of the one with attacking. Yeah, I think it's Hackers. I think Hackers is a movie on there. Yep, yeah, Hackers. Yep, Hackers. <laughs> yep. Well, '90s to me was a like it was a lot of dark. It was some dark times in the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like the, I mean, it was kind of apropos. Like the music was like you know kind of running right along with it. And I, you, like you're right. And because Portishead had a sound that lent itself to that kind of aesthetic like it was big with it had like a movie making sound they were influenced a lot more by like 60s and 70s like like bond films and shit so a lot of their music sounds almost like that right right and like they started experimenting with other different types of music they had these big string arrangements and like they would mix in like industrial sawing and string bits and like it was just a big cauldron of shit. And I think they, I like to say Porter's head has a bigger sound. Yeah, I think and that's usually the. That, I think that's usually the attraction. Yeah, like they have a. Um, and when we say bigger sound, what we mean, we literally mean. They make that shit sound big. They give it... Like, they probably bring every fucking thing into the studio. You know, like, as many instruments as they can. And just, like, make it sound large. In a room Mm -hmm. with, like, a certain kind of acoustics. To just give it a bigger sound. So it kind of has a different appeal. Whereas, like... Tricky is really like you said. It's very, woo. Like Tricky likes to mumble over <laughs> like some real ambient shit. I know that sounds um. like I'm talking about <laughs> trap music, <laughs> but I'm not because that because that was his shit. That's what he used to do. And what he still does. 
Like so, that's you know he did. Um, like you know, is it is it safe to say that it's like that you can't like really box it a lot of times? Because like I think mm-hmm. about like when you when you think about trip hop, it's like um. Like with with hip hop, it's always like you know it's a defining it's something it's something that you can define and be like oh yeah that's definitely without a question. But like a lot of times you got like X that people have mentioned like Moby or like um like I'm uh, uh Combustible Edison. I don't know if people know who that is. Like um I yeah, listen I've to them sometimes. Before. Yeah, um, I listen to them sometimes and like I hear a certain shit. I'm like oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like that's got that similar sound, but they got other sounds that's like eh, it's not exactly the you know what I'm saying? It's not defining. It doesn't define yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't put it in there. Like, like um, second wave, like what they call, like like once you get through the breakout and you hit the mainstream, because you know everything changes when you hit mainstream. That second true, wave, true. what they would call post-trip hop, sounds mm. different, and it has a lot of other, like like so like Sneaker Pimp or Morchiba has a, has like a little bit different sound than Tricky or or you know or like massive attacks. Right. But it's still considered trip hop because it it's kind of running along the more along the origins. But like I mean, even people that we like listen to trip hop and then took that shit and flipped it back in America like when you listen to Cool Keith that that's what you're mm-hmm. hearing. Yeah. Like Dr. Octagon yeah. is fucking trip hop inspired. When you yeah. hear it's, Del, it's, when it's, you hear Dan the Automator, any of those people like Prince Paul. Yeah, they work they work they work with those kind of sounds. But I think a lot of times why it doesn't get questioned a lot of times is because the X you talking about, they more underground anyway. So it like Yeah, I was gonna say a lot of people don't even know. Yeah, yep. so like they, they free they more free they more free to experiment than somebody that's a little more Very true. known. Well, Cool Keith is always... I love Cool Keith. Cool Keith has always... Been, shout out to Cool Keith. Black Elvis in space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, like I said, he, he's always been experimental and out there. You know? Yeah. Like he's I was... Doing um, really different shit. I was thinking about... Um, when you said DJ Shadow, I was thinking about um, that song him and Most Def did for the... Uh, for the um, Fast and the Furious movie. Which one? Which one? Uh, it was Tokyo Drift. It's the um, it's the song that's on in the beginning. I'm trying to find the name of it now. Okay. No, I love uh, um. Six days. Six days. That's the name of it. I think I remember that song. Yeah, the one where it's like it's only Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but trip hop is also defined by the types of samples they use because they're going to be offbeat. When they do use funk samples, they're going to flip them in a way that you're not going to recognize them. Or expect. Or, yeah, it's very unexpected. They're, every, everything about trip hop is to, is to do the unexpected, to use an unexpected sample, to use, to, to flip it in an, in an un, you know, un, un, um, suspecting way to use strange sounds that you normally wouldn't use, and it, it's meant to to be trippy. That's why it's called that. It's taking you on a trip. So like where you feel like I'm not on drugs, but I feel like I could be listening to this. Mm, that sounds familiar, don't it? Yeah, really does. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like I should uh, pop up Molly. Ambient sounds, mumbling over a record. Yeah, all that trippy, trippy music. Hmm. What does that sound familiar? I don't. You know what? I think and and I wonder sometimes. I know this sounds so stupid and simplistic. That shit is, and I, and I know it's new trap, but that shit is literally one vowel off. <laughs> and I wonder if somebody was like, hmm. But yeah, old somewhere. trap doesn't sound like that. Old trap doesn't sound that way though. Yeah. Like, I you know, like Pi and Jeezy don't sound like that. So, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, but yeah, I really um, and most folks think it's 
it's dark and it's sort of twisted and when you play it like it puts you in some kind of horrible mood it doesn't put me in a horrible mood I, I know you were saying earlier when you were listening it does something to you yeah just the overall sound of the sonic presentation Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> sonic presentation We use big A words and phrases on this show. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to mind. Don't worry. Don't worry. I think it just de- I think it just depends <laughs> on what you attach it to, because like um, yeah. it's groups it's groups that we um that's defined as trip hop. Like Estero, like I listen, I like I like listening. I like to her. Estero. But hers is her stuff is more, like more a little more upbeat most times. Yeah, a little bit. It's still got that ambient edge to it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But yeah. you can you don't you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's like that uh. And um, you know another thing I like about trip hop, like I know, like you know, like we talk about like how it it manifested itself in the '90s, but like when you listen to it, like you right back there in that time period. <laughs> That's you know what it's it's true in it, and I think it is and it isn't. Like, and I don't know if it's because I'm the old head, yeah. <laughs> but when I listen to a lot of it, it doesn't sound dated to me because it still sounds good. Yeah. I didn't say that to mean that it's. I didn't say that to mean that it's dated though. Oh no no yeah yeah. Yeah it does it does. Tony Hawk Tony Hawk skater all over again. Yep yep exactly yep yeah. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but but I'm saying that because I know people are going to attach it to sh- to other shit that yeah. is older. So they're gonna be like oh this is old like people don't know how to necessarily break those things apart so I'm trying to kind of bust them up like. Even though it's like you're gonna attach it to something that you think is older, like it's still not dated when you when you play it. Right. Yeah. Like I think of train spotting when I think of a lot of that kind of shit. Like a lot of that, all those indie movies. Like yeah, anything, right, exactly. Anything Guy Ritchie did, <laughs> like you know, like <laughs> like that kind of shit, and it is attached to that kind of stuff. Because that shit, like, there were a bunch of dark ass indie movies made in the '90s, like, like that, or like, even, you know, That's shit that was like, found the era. Yeah, the found the era. exactly. Yeah, exactly. right, right, yeah. But it doesn't mean that when you play it now, it has like, oh, that's just that '90s shit. No, it's just you play it and it's still like. It still sounds good. I mean, if it didn't sound good, people wouldn't be jacking it. Mm-hmm. You know, because we just, what we were discussing earlier, all the people who, the new folks who sampled um, Portishead. And there have been, you know, some new school people who really have kind of dug in there and used Portishead samples. Because it's just dope. Right, and they and they want the sound. You know, it's cool. Just you know, just don't don't be making people think that you're not sampling anymore. That's what my biggest issue is. Like, stop that. I don't know. Now I'm thinking now. Like, do, does it seem like it's been harder to define like uh, an overall sound of any of any genre? Like in the last in the last like fifteen twenty years now. It, it, some, yeah. it's like more so defining a consistent portion right of it. yeah know, like when I think when I think about like you know like 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 the early like like the early 2000s or whatever like I usually you know what I'm saying I might think about like you know Kanye or whatever but I don't know like um I don't know like it's not I don't I don't feel like it's that all that all encompassing sound like when you when we talk about the 90s like when you talk about like hip-hop producers of the 90s you always go straight to pete rock havoc P- P- dj Premier, people like that right you know what uh-huh. i'm saying and like like we talking about right now like with trip hop and all of that like this is like like me and anthony said like that sound defines you know what i'm saying like particular it, it, it bring you back to a time where yeah damn i was doing this or whatever whatever it's like a it's like a particular sound attached to that era where they're like Nowadays, I don't really see too much of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's because we older or whatever, but 
But well, there's no sound know, effects it, there. Like now, no, like that, when I think of early, there is. When, I think like, when, when I when I think of early 2000s, like I I literally would have to watch a video and see everybody wear jerseys and do rays and be like, oh yeah, that was like oh three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Things certain now, things, unfortunately, and 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 be like, oh, this is early 2000s, or it, not. Like, I can listen to certain shit and go, oh, that's early 2010s. Right, yeah, for, right. For one but thing, see, I keep track like, of, I keep track of dates and turned. shit too. Because the shit turned about that time, so I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's before the shit it's turned. Just, I think it's definitely less definitive. I mean. Like, because I can pinpoint something from the early 90s, the late 90s, the mid 90s, but like the 2000s, 2010s, it started getting harder for me because I had that, that attachment wasn't the same. I wasn't really listening to what was going on at the time, and I was still backtracking back then. Well, I was listening to, I was, I was always like listening to like older stuff and like, you know, whatever was contemporary too. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're talking about, if you're talking about like, if you're talking about, if you're talking about if you're talking about like early 2000s, I might say like Timberland, Kanye, Pharrell, that type of shit. But up like, until a certain right. point. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Up until yep. a certain point, it seems. Yeah. Well, like, I can still pinpoint a bunch of that. Like, when I was teaching y'all, like in 2003, 2004, 2005, I can still pinpoint all that shit. Yeah. Very easily. Like, I, I'm like, oh, okay, that's Kanye. Or, oh, oh, oh that's fucking just Lay. Like. Or that, like, that's, yeah, right. that shit is right. very, very, it's still distinctive. I think part of it is we don't fucking know these people. (laughs) (laughs) And we fucking don't want to know them. Like, I mean, Future. His sound is distinctive, even if we don't like it. And they always remind you that Metro Boomin is behind it. But I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't yep. give a fuck about Metro for real, for real. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the, I mean, but that's the point. Like, they can pinpoint it this out. Me, it took me a while to find out what he was going to do if he didn't trust me. <laughs> I'm like, what? I was lost for a while. Uh, um, and I'm still lost. I don't want to say none of that. <laughs> no, he talking about like the intro and shit. Like when you listen to the I know, beginning of- I know. <laughs> I just, I just, I fucking don't care. No. No, like I, I like literally that. don't care where it comes from. I don't care to like look it up and find out. Like, I mean, and we do a lot of research on this show. Like we researched this shit. We research every topic we talk about, but certain shit we just we don't want to de- like. We're fighting having a research track right now, and even <laughs> I mean we gotta do it. Gotcha. But again, yeah. because it's so everything is 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 moving into the arena where it's pop. So when you start pushing into the pop arena, you lose your definitive sound. There is mm-hmm. no definitive sound. You are washed. You sound like a blurred line. <laughs> That's part of the big issue. Yeah, pretty much. You know, like, that's kind of the point of it, is that you don't sound definitive. Like, I mean, hip-hop used to be very much defined by lyricism. And now you have people saying crazy shit, like, oh, we know, well, you know, when, um, uh, 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 that's that, that old-school narrative hip-hop. What the fuck? What? <laughs> I'm glad I've never actually heard somebody say that. Are you serious? I've heard it like a zillion times. <laughs> Narrative hip hop, the boom bap era, the the um the NYC era, dude. It's not an NYC era. Other than there were the '80s had a bunch of different coasts and different places that were popping besides New York. Mm-hmm. But they feel in their mind that that that, that because New York dominated that every had. Everyone had a New York sound. Bullshit. They didn't. Just the popular kids that they know about. Strong lyricism that doesn't have anything to do with New York, though. That's why I don't understand that. Like, people just wanted to have strong lyrics, but they associate that shit now with New York. Like, no, it was because of New York. Why is strong lyrics found upon? I, I don't. I can't. 
I just <laughs> That doesn't because make sense pop music, because pop music has taken over your shit, and let's even even trip hop, giving trip trip hop trop, ugh, excuse me, sorry about that. Trip hop has some deep ass content. Yeah. Content. It doesn't have this pansy manzy lyricism in it. Some deep shit in there. Like really deep. They're dealing with some shit. So you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's just humans humoring them again. <laughs> I suppose. I guess <laughs> humans got a. I guess humans got a human. Is that it? Humans go a human. Time, time. Yeah. Okay, so um. Out to lunch. Let's, yeah, let's out to lunch. Let's out to lunch this mug. Yeah, I'm hungry. Where we eating? <laughs> <laughs> so the title of this show. Trip Hop called and it wants its aesthetic back. Mm-hmm. Trap, new trap, that means you. Okay, mm-hmm. new yeah. trap. New trap, you are out to lunch like a big bitch. I feel like new trap gets picked on. But rightfully so. Um, as we just said earlier, <laughs> the shit is. It touches on topics like depression and odd sexual issues and deep dark depression. shit and depression and drugs. <laughs> um, old like old school hip hop or even just like our, we didn't talk about that kind of shit like that. And because people aren't as we were just saying, because people aren't educating themselves anymore about what came before, they literally don't know that that this trap shit is just li- literally lifted the aesthetic of trip hop and just kind of applied it. I mean, all my friends are dead. <laughs> Moaning nonsensically. I don't think they over- know that trip hop was done. Huh? I don't think they know that trip hop is a thing. I think that there is. I think people are associated with someone that knows. Well, we talked. We talked about that before, like how, um, you know, a lot of times the the rapper doesn't necessarily have. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They don't under. They don't care where these sounds are coming from. All they know is that oh, I like this sound, and I want to. You know what I'm saying? I want to rap or mumble yep. or whatever they care. I want to do whatever I want to do over this particular sound. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these producers, I mean, I hate to say it, but maybe they don't even know nowadays. Maybe it's gotten so bad to it where it's at that point where, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, they don't know where these samples coming from. They don't know what, you know what I'm saying, like, what they what they putting together to make what they're making. They're just riding off of a popular sound. Well, I think the the ones who started it, whoever they are, like the originators, I think they know. It's just like how somebody will come to me and like like back in the in like when Nikki was was like rhyming and like all these different cadences and everybody was like, oh shit, Nikki Nikki, all oh, like bees in the trap. I was like bees in the trap, huh? <laughs> you mean? I hated you mean? That. I hated you, mean that you mean AKA I stole Schoolie D's flow? <laughs> uh-huh. See, Nikki may not have known who Schoolie D was and where that flow came from. Whether she did or she didn't, I can't say. But the people who she's pandering to never don't know who Schoolie D is and right. never heard I of mean, him. I don't know. I think I think in that case I think uh Nikki may have known because like um so? like it just depends on like a lot of times when you talk about rappers like where their influences rappers influences come from rappers their influences don't come from 
producers. You get what I'm saying? Most uh, of Rhymes, possibly. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I mean, right, but I mean, if somebody comes to you and tells you to rhyme in the rhyme in this fashion, I'm just what I'm saying is. It trickles down from someplace else, whether or not it's the, it's sure, the rapper, sure. it's yeah. the producer, yeah, or that. whoever it is. It's somebody that is like the Quincy Jones of your outfit, who is coming in and saying, like when you, because I mean, the producer will come in and tell you, and you'll hear us talk more about this when we talk about the, the producer, the composer, you know, the different components of who makes up, you know, the music. The producer has the potential to come in and tell you this is what this shit should sound like musically mm-hmm. vocally all of it true yeah I, I dig that but uh, the reason I the reason I say that though is because um all right for example like uh like uh, uh fabulous fabulous uh holla bat youngin like yeah. that's that's you know what I'm saying people that know you know he got that from Ice T yep you know what I'm saying? But people, like, around that time, especially during that time, like, I wasn't thinking, like, oh, he got that flow from Ice-T. I just know I like this song, you know what I'm saying, at the time. And, um, but I feel like Fabulous is old enough to, you know what I'm saying, where he knew that, all right, you know what I'm saying, like, that's where I got the flow from and that'll work for this particular song. I don't, see, I don't know if he knew it was Ice-T. I mean, he may have. I think Fab is one of those guys that knew. Yeah. Like he said on there, he said with the nineteen eighty flow, make the next yeah. one the ladies go. Like you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like that's true. But see that you know what? That's what makes it okay. Yeah. Cause like, cause like when Common comes on and he was like, like he when oh, he did like um his uh, Universal Mind Control album, and he came on and he was flowing like Africa Bambada. like you knew what right. he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like he knew yeah. what he was doing. The problem is, like, the problem, yeah. the problem yeah. we having though, and what we getting into now with this out the lunch is that you got people that's just doing, you know what I'm saying, what they heard the last person doing, and it's turned into, you know, a case of, like we said before, yep. sampling a sample, dubbing a tape that's already been dubbed twice and shit like that. So. And once it get, like, gets down to, like, the sixth dub, it's fucking fuzzy as shit. It sounds like crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no doubt. Like, it's, like, it's like, copy. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, soulless. And and again, to be connected to something. Right. Yeah. I don't give a shit if you're making pop music. It's like the Beatles made good ass pop music. I don't want to hear that argument anymore about oh well it's pop it should be fun. It can be fun and not suck. You just have to work on sure. it. You know. But I like I think. I really think that there's a big director that comes in on a lot of these projects and just tells them how to sound e- even vocally and how to sound, you know, musically. And they, they pull the samples and roll with it. And I say that, Aaron, and, and because they're making this shit no longer the way you would make hip hop. They make it the way you would make pop records. That's what mm-hmm. happens when you make pop records. Some dude that looks like Rod Temperton. <laughs> <laughs> and no respect, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to speak ill of the dead. If it was Rod Temperton sound, it would still be better. Because he was a fucking beast. If somebody with less talent than that. I don't know. I, I still say I still say it's a it's a case of people not knowing where these sounds coming from. Like they don't know. They're not caring. Not caring either. They don't give. Yeah, a that shit. that yeah that too. It's just like you know what I'm saying. Like one of the one of the few um like producers that I did dig into because I know we talked about like not paying attention to uh not paying attention to producers like after a certain point in time. Uh huh. But one one of the producers I did like really get into um as far as like rap goes is um. Uh, uh, forty, uh, uh, Drake's Drake's producer, and he did like he did um a couple tracks for Drake, and um he did the he the guy that did he did swimming pools for uh Kendrick for Kendrick yeah yeah and um I was listening to those records and I'm like 
you know, I just like like the way that he put them together. So that's why I, I was digging mm-hmm. into them. And like, um, I don't know, like I don't hear a lot of um, anything that he's doing anymore. So it was just like, you know, oh, I guess you know what I'm saying. Like, I guess he just came on the scene and then like, you know, dipped out or whatever. Because I don't hear a lot of artists that work with him anymore. I guess Drake still works with him. I don't listen to enough of Drake to know. But it seemed like you know, it seemed like after that, um, you had a lot of other producers coming out of nowhere and just like jumping on to you know what was going sound. on in that and yeah that right. was going on with that sound you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, you do got those producers too who are actually in it for the craft who might take a step back to work on something new. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. And that that's that's. I like that point because that's an amazing thing. Like that's what you should be doing. Like, yeah. um, remember in the um Defiant ones where Iveen was always talking about that. Like he would kind of, I mean, you gotta kind of cleanse your palate. You gotta take right. yourself out of the out of the equation for, because you're looking for a new sound. You don't want to replicate what's already out there. So you kind of gotta isolate yourself to to come to that. You know, but that doesn't happen a lot now because everybody everybody is hearing each other too much because they're not trying to be unique anyway. Yeah, it's the uh, minute right, the minute right the minute right. Yeah, their goal is not not uniqueness. So, um, so yeah, um, trap, step it up. You probably won't. I hope you die soon. This trap did. I was just gonna say <laughs> trap did. Unfortunately, not right now. I don't think it's gonna last that much longer. On I mean, that, that last song that we that I sent the other day, we were, we were watching Rap Critic, mm. and like, and he gave that song a five out of five, and I was like, what the fuck is he smoking? <laughs> I mean, did you play it? It doesn't sound like it's just. It sounds like I don't care that it, it sounds more clever to him. It sounds like the fucking same as they always sound to me. Yeah, I think I blame that on like you know being overdosed with this shit. It's being over yeah. yeah, we it's like, it's like you're so overdosed with it that like you know what I'm saying like uh, a little bit of anything is like oh, okay, you know what I'm saying. I guess I can, <laughs> I guess I can sink my teeth into that. It's like that type of shit. You know what? It's so funny because when we were talking about mirrors the other week, um, because of that stupid effed up comparison he made on the um. On the video for um, uh, real hip hop versus fake hip hop, when he was talking about um, comparing Migos to Daz Effects, mm-hmm. how long did Daz Effects sound last? Not very. Yeah. No, you know why? Because we were so fucking smart, we got bored. <laughs> Yeah. Really quickly, and we moved on. That that shit did not stick for a long period of time. Once it was up, like <laughs> that shit is not happening now. It's lasting too fucking long because it tells you again, again, your art is a reflection of your society and where you are. It goes back to uh, oh, uh cool G rap, cool G rap. Yeah, you're entertained by what you understand. You are only entertained to the level of your intellect. Uh, Alright, so if we gonna say that if we gonna say that like, you know, like um uh, uh hip hop been infiltrated by, you know, maybe producers that's being a trip hop music or whatever and like they like, you know, they threw all those type of aesthetics on these uh-huh. rappers these rappers that we gotta deal with now. Uh-huh. Um Is it like is it like the same in like, you know what I'm saying, traditional hip hop? Whereas like I feel like in the early like in the early to mid nineties um, R and B artists or people that was like more fans of R and B artists like started infiltrating the scene and was like, oh, yeah. you know, let's let's yeah. throw this on it and throw that on it and then it turned into some other shit. Well, I mean, that was like that was the whole Young Ma Marky. <laughs> we were talking about that the other show when they were like, mm. fuck this, lacing my shit with hip hop. Fuck you. Hip hop is right. always gonna be that. It's always gonna be that vehicle though. Well, like, well, like, I'm sorry, or um, I'm late to my shit with R&B. Excuse me, like, but I mean, <laughs> it was 
it was heavier soul and not just yes. it was it was the newer can more contemporary sound the R&B that was the that was what was the concern mm-hmm. but I mean it, it wound up happening anyway right like you can't really stop it because hip hop is a genre that that pulls from everything so you're, I mean you're eventually going to start pulling from everything in different directions that is understandable it's what you do with it when you do that what you think is like the biggest example of um, artists nowadays that pull from that uh, that trip hop aesthetic though I was saying earlier um, Triple X came to mind and I was gonna say XXX Tashion Schoolboy and you like Schoolboy yeah, yeah, I fuck with Schoolboy. Matter of fact, yeah, he does he does do it more often than I um than I even realize. It's I like think, I think most of the newer acts have aesthetics of it. They do. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's not even well, just it's not. Again, I don't think it's limited. All on drugs. Yeah, drugs. yeah. That's <laughs> another thing. That's another thing. It's usually the ones that talk the most about drugs too that do. Yeah. It. Yeah, that's like that's, that's like why the, you can directly trace now. that shit back to it. That's why you mm-hmm. can literally d- directly trace that shit back to trip hop because that's a big component of that sound is they want that sound because it sounds like it aids itself to you being on a drug trip. Yep, mm-hmm. some type of like ambient. Yeah. Yeah. Some type of uh, ecstasy and shit. Ecstasy was the popping joint back in the day, right? <laughs> right? So, so like so literally so at a rave or like and they slow it down at the rave and you're like, whoa. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, or like now when you're in the crowd and and they're you know playing some old crazy loud and you know, aka cloud rap or whatever the fuck they call it. Cloud rap. I still, I still, I still can't believe that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> cloud rap. But I mean, look at the components of cloud rap. They when just you go they in just, and just type in cloud rap. What they just threw like? a name on. They just they just it's threw a name hop, on that shit. Trip hop without a baseline. It's trip hop with no bass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's got electronic shit in it. Cause that's what they they like ASAP Rocky and like all the ASAP mob. Mm-hmm. Like they, you know, that's what they they call that shit. Like like they're supposed to be the components of that. But again. And like Lil B, like where does that sound come from? Mhm, no doubt. Yeah. Like stop, and, and, and oh, it's it's melodic and it's dreamy and it's. It's mm-hmm. a vibe. It's lit. It's a vibe. <laughs> it's really? lit. <laughs> it's a vibe. I F S A. It's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> Where, like, where's Easter Rae? Stop doing Because I look at it and I'm looking for Easter Rae every time I see it. Nope. Yeah. Yo, you know, what's, you, know what, you know what's crazy <laughs> about that? Like, I was thinking about um, how, like, uh, text messaging and, like, the way, like, the way, like, we got to look at words more often than not nowadays because of computers. Uh-huh. I was thinking uh-huh. about yeah. that, that that shit fucked up slang for everything. Like, <laughs> like I never thought, like, like back in the day, like we never thought about how you spell John until you had to text her. Hit this line. <laughs> the first and time now I you see it everywhere. Like, like in yo, every bro, ad, you, you see John. J A W N. Bro, how you spell bro? How you spell boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you spell boy? Yo, yo, Philly, that's the biggest fucking thing in Philly. How you spell boy? Nobody yeah. knows how to spell it. Nobody. Nobody knows how to spell it. <laughs> People usually send it like B U L L or B U L. Uh huh. I even spell I spell what's up differently than most people. Yeah. And all right, what's up? All right, what's up? I, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate when people send me A R D R. Like I don't know. That's how <laughs> I, I say start, it. I start spelling it like that because that's how everybody else spell it. A R D. Like I spell it I G A C. Alright. You know, you know why I be fucking be up because I be sitting there looking like all right. I I G H T is spelled I I. Yeah. I. But you gotta I, put a gotta I, put a fucking apostrophe between the I. <laughs> Some people do A I, I, I. I. Look, most people don't even use punctuation marks. I do. I do. I'm still an English. I'm still an English teacher at heart, man. Yeah, it's like apostrophe suck. Yeah, 
Uh-huh. <laughs> S-U-P. <laughs> you got it. No, I mean... The part, the part that messed me up about it is like, like people that do that, I'd be like, so that's the way it was, that's the way it was felt to you in your head all these years before we ended uh, up doing that shit. Like, that's funny. That's how you see words. That's how you see words. Huh? <laughs> R, R ain't a word. R ain't a word. R. Fuck you, a pirate. <laughs> R, me maybe. <laughs> Today on today, one schools in podcast the ball. That one way <laughs> left. It's gonna it's gonna be all right. This John, oh, that John, yeah. way left on this, this ball. J W N. I know somebody that spells John J A U N. That's wine almost. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, so you know how you spell Sean? Uh huh. Like, a bunch of them were like S H A W N or S H A U N or S E A N. I've uh, seen John spell J E A N like Gene. I'm like, what the fuck? I would, hey, uh, I would read it that way. Like, I would, like, like that um, shit is French. That's like Jean. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh, okay. Uh, back, back to second period. Back on okay, time. Back on okay. time. <laughs> hey, we don't really left. We don't really left on them. We let it. Um, we like to to let it go. You know, let it hang out sometimes a little bit because you know the talk. Not like we, can, not like let it hang out like candy though, right? No, not like that. <laughs> Man, I'm all caught up on the deuce. My two really? favorite characters. Are, my two favorite characters are dead. Yo, Aaron. So I was watching. Um. <laughs> The secretary this morning. So if you go back and watch that, you can see that Maggie Gyllenhaal always looked like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because like, cause, like she was young then, she was much younger. That was I like 2002, that. I think. I, that was like. I don't hear from that. Um, or just the common streetwalker apparently. Uh, apparently. Damn. So everybody loves to watch the dudes. We're talking about the dudes. <laughs> Um, My two favorite characters are dead. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. All your Yo, friends are Tariq dead. Had it coming. Tariq, all his friends I are think. dead. Mm. Yeah, Reggie had it coming. Reggie had it coming. All my friends are dead. Then I eat my eggs. Thunder I thigh should have been that easy to push out the window, though. Should have been uh, that yo, easy to push out the window. Yo, I would have fucking ate my omelet. Fuck that Negro. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> 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 yeah. It wasn't that deep. It wasn't that deep. I, I would have been like, I would have drank my coffee and ate my omelet. Dang, Stretched dang, out and, and I mean she moved on to Method Man. It wasn't like she wasn't gonna See? find a new pimp. Just go to the next one. He died right there talking shit to the end of a forty four. <laughs> right? How you know you was talking? Cause the motherfucker never shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't. But, I like that show. I don't care what nobody say. It was slow moving this season, but that shit had so many moments that just made you go. <laughs> yeah. It did. was just funny, funny than a motherfucker. Um. So, speaking of trap, <laughs> <laughs> yo, like, what do we think the next thing is gonna be? I don't the think next thing as far as what? Like, I mean, like, like, where is it gonna go? I'm hoping that lyricism makes a comeback. It seems to be going that way. But question, here's my question, here's my big question. What the hell else are you gonna go to now? Because we haven't been making any music to really sample from. Because that's the that's the problem of not sampling or not making other genres of music at a high level or abandoning mm-hmm. everything for hip hop because hip hop is a genre that samples. So if you're not making any clean music, pure music, new music, for me to sample from, what's this? What's this? Where's my new sounds coming from? My my whole thing is like, um, 
there's a whole back culture to sample from though. Like that's where things like nerdcore come in because they sample in video games now. Like we got other stuff sampled from besides just jazz and blues and funk. Even though we still got a whole bunch of jazz and blues and funk to sample from that nobody touched. Yeah, a lot of people don't listen to it. Like, even it's like newer artists that people don't uh, listen to that's still using, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, 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 that's like Gary. That's one of those things that have a problem with that. Yeah. So, you're saying we're going to basically see a resurgence, is what you're saying? That's what it seems like. Like, you got Crit Jump rocking, you got Rhapsody rocking, Skazoo just put something out rocking, Kendrick. Still doing his thing, J Cole doing. But, his I mean, thing. but you just. But like, I mean, but you but only like talking about. Of- yeah, but you only talking about hip hop, like um, as far as like the lyrics or whatever. I'm talking about like as far as like that pure music. Um, is Mitchell talking yeah, about like we yeah. got like artists, we got artists that still that still bring you some shit. Like um, what's that group that uh that uh Jay Z got the uh the sample for 444 from? Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh my God. See when you Somebody, get older, the mind goes. Right. <laughs> but, but I'm saying I'm saying though the the original sources are still full of untapped material. That's true too. Yeah. But see, what you're saying is that we're literally the old way. Like we're gonna be forced to go back to the old way of handling shit. Not extent. necessarily. Not necessarily. This. There's ways to innovate, but still using the same source material. Well, I guess what I mean, but but, I mean, you're still going back to the old shit, though. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's why I said, that's why I mentioned Knife Wonder, because, like, all Knife Wonder's music, like, Rock Nation's music is still, they still innovate, and they still sound and fresh, but they still using traditional sampling material, you know, they're not reaching far left like Kanye would do. True, but that shit still had, like, like 444 has a hearkening back sound. Right. Where like Kanye and like earlier off um off air you would hear me and Aaron blame Kanye and <laughs> and um and Kid Cudi for this this kind of current shit too because Kanye likes to, to, and he started liking to figure out where he can get the weirdest sound and shit from, you know, and and how much he can start talking about depression and death every two seconds. And, mm-hmm. and then make that sound as big shit. as possible. And make it sound as big as possible. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, because he, like, we watched some shit too that, I forgot what post that was on YouTube where, um... I don't think it was complex either, but they were talking about how, you know, Kanye did that on purpose because he wanted to be huge. Right. So he wanted to make like stadium rap. Mm hmm. And have a big sound and have a, you know. Yeah, more I think a lot of times. I think a lot of times that's the issue we deal with too. Like when you got like somebody that's like, you know, as talented as Kanye, but their ego is not in check. So then, like, they they try to, you know what I'm saying, take from wherever they can take from and, 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 and push it and push it on people on a bigger scale. And then it's like, oh, man, like, you know, is this what, you know what I'm saying, is this what everybody is really into? And it's like, no, that's not really what everybody is into. That's what Kanye is into. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I have no problem with you innovating. I have no problem with you doing things differently. I do have a problem with your overall um desires and your and your not your content so much. I'll I'll listen to some ratchet shit if it's done well. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, that's a huge misconception that people have of Gen Xers when we attack this shit. They think oh you guys are hypocrites. No we're not. We don't care if this content is is bad. You, you, you can give us bad content all day. You can talk about drugs all fucking day. Do it in a way that doesn't suck. Mm-hmm. Right. It just figure. needs to sound. It, it just literally needs to sound good. It needs to sound elevated. Give me my ratchet wrapped in like caviar. 
But see, that's what I see. But that's what I'm saying. Like people, people want to push stuff to the forefront and put it in the mainstream. It ain't got no place being there a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of it's a lot of stuff that's pushed into the mainstream that has no place being there. Like Eminem has no place in the mainstream for real, for real, for real. It's just the fact that he's, you know, <laughs> that was the, white. The, the the climate of the '90s though, that edginess. And he's white. It, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what it that's is that's what it is for the most part because it's people that would listen to people like, you know, black artists do the same content as Eminem. And you know, it'll be like, uh, you know, it's too it's too provocative. You know what I'm saying? Why is it provocative now? Because I'm not because I'm not with Drake. Because because I'm white artists that that that, that, like didn't make it, Aaron. So, okay, for instance. Um, somebody who's not in the mainstream who happens to be white, Aesop Rock. Right. A bunch of people know him, but he's he's never broke what you would call out of a more of an underground level. Yeah, like he does, but see, but Aesop Rock does more like you know what I'm saying traditional like what people would probably label as like backpack type rap. He does, but again, he he hasn't he isn't broken because he sticks to. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't break from his aesthetic. Like he, 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 he kind of knows what he is, and he doesn't try to go. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell some records today. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and but then like hop on something. Yeah, but that's what I mean by popular. people, people, people forcing the sound on like the mainstream audience a lot of times. Like Beck, like we just got done talking about Beck. Like Beck does a lot of different stuff, and like he don't, he doesn't force like what he's doing on the majority mainstream you know what I'm saying audience but he's popular but see Beck is rare he's a rarity I'm talking off air again he's, Beck is like he's been Beck is like for Prince time, so. yes and Beck is like Prince like I'm not those who love Prince I love Prince I am probably one of his biggest fans I'm not saying that Beck is Prince I'm saying that he is like Prince in that he covers all different kind of genres you can't pin him down He's all over the place, and he does it extremely well at a very high level. And you don't have many people who are going to be able to do that. So if you think you're back, you're not in general. Yeah. But it's not. It's the, he still doesn't do it in the in the Kanye kind of way, where it's like you know what I'm saying, where his music sounds like he's basically screaming and begging for a Grammy. Yeah. yeah, and Kanye knows he's a, like. I I learned after Jesus walks. Like when I when I heard that song, I was like, mm, okay. Yeah, right. And I love it. I do love it. But as you said, Aaron, it it's kind of obvious. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that attention seeking. Like you can hear it. Like don't get me wrong. I like I like Kanye first three pro- uh, projects too. But you know what I'm saying? It, it was obvious what was going on. Well, you know what? I was reading something. I can't even remember what I was reading, what they were talking about in the article. It was whoever introduced Kanye to um, <laughs> to certain music, he had never even heard of Daft Punk. Right. Ain't that crazy? And then he heard it and he was like, oh, shit, I got to use this. You know? Not saying again, I love it. I do love it, but you're right. It's like he was on a mission. Mm-hmm. He he yeah. did it, but I mean, at at what expense? Like now we're overrun with all this. Uh huh. And it's like, and nowadays it's like, you know, what I'm saying like because you know we, you know, what I'm saying you got people that spend so time trying to. Oh, pull from every genre and and throw it and throw a song out there and get, to get people to say, oh, this is what you know. What I'm saying this is what's hot right now. Now, you know, what I'm saying pop music, pop music ain't even defined the same anymore. Like back in the day, pop music was just something that you know, what I'm saying everybody gravitated to. But now, we can throw some trip hop aesthetics on it and it's still like you know, what I'm saying. Uh, well, hip hop is pop now, and it's the most. You know, it's it's the past rock. It's the most popular, so it's now exactly. pop. It's like everything. It's like pop is the pop is the base form of mainstream music now. Yeah. And pop shouldn't 
the issue and problem is pop should not be the basis of any fucking thing. Pop is not a basis. The other forms that you start out with are the basis. What you exactly. move towards <laughs> is pop. Pop is not a base. Right. <laughs> it's not. So that's what I'm saying. And I guess in my head, we're going to have to drop back down to to things that have a, a base or a source. Because pop is not a base or a source. We gotta go back to something that's, that's more elemental, like you know, that, that comes more from from a place of feeling. Yeah. AKA soul. Mm-hmm. A heartbeat, a pulse. Yeah, I think I think another issue we're having is that we don't have the scenes like the, the, the scenes aren't as isolated as they used to be anymore. Like we used to have like um I think we talked about it before, like when you listen to uh Death Punk, you know what I'm saying? Like that mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, what they were doing was an underground you know what I'm saying, they was doing that in the underground scene for a long time, you know what I'm saying? Before they got to a level where, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying, people know who Dad Punk is, you know what I'm saying, so, right. uh, nowadays, you know, people don't, they don't give themselves that time to experiment in a particular scene and build an audience, where it's like, if you, you put a song out on SoundCloud, you put a song out on your Facebook, or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and it gets mm-hmm. somewhere, it's like, oh, alright, you know what I'm saying, well, that's just how I'm, you know what I'm saying, now I'm hot, now, you know, and I'm gonna just start rocking with that, or whatever the case may be, it's not, well, again, like, we, when you talk about trip hop, trip hop was the same way. Trip hop is a, you know what I'm saying, is an underground scene. It wasn't really something that was like available Popping. to the mainstream. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't nothing that was really available to the mainstream at that time anyway. And you know, it it it, it has its own audience. Like it's still a lot of those acts and groups from the trip hop scene are still they still out putting out music. They still touring and yep. all that type of stuff. It's just mm-hmm. that people don't hear about it. So like you know how you know the average person they just like. Well, I ain't heard nothing from this person. I ain't heard nothing about them, so I guess. Well, because they got their base, and they don't. They don't need. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Anything more further? Because, like, personally, I would rather have a a a smaller group of dedicated fans that are my base than to pop real big and then fizzle out because, like, fucking designer. Like, like, where's designer now? Yeah, exactly. Designer, designer don't even know where he at now. Well, Fetty Wap knows where he is. He's in jail. Same thing. Like, are we going to hear Fetty <laughs> Wap's name anymore? Probably not. Right. I heard he was coming out with an album. Well, I, you know what? Good for him. But I mean, <laughs> you really think in your heart of hearts, Fetty uh, Wap is probably going to. Fall in the same category as your boy, like um, who was that dude that I always um, Trinidad James? Like, where is he? No. Like your 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 career, and I'm doing air quotes right now. <laughs> your career is probably maybe, and that's what you putting out nonstop garbage. Like every six months. Mhm. And you, justify you, you trap rappers. Yeah. Like people like to people like to um say that you know a lot of these artists they oh they they still in it because they they um they 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 work harder than anybody. It's not that they work harder. They just slap you in the face with that shit more than anybody. Like it like how yeah. many times we don't heard like you know what I'm saying uh. Uh, uh, a Rick Ross song that people was probably like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, it, it, that ain't, you know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't good. And then like next thing you know, he might hit you with one that everybody's like, okay, that's the one. But he didn't already hit you with like ten that yep. you thought, you know what I'm saying? That you probably was like, oh, that shit was trash. You know what I'm saying? And then you know it yeah. take that one for you to be like, well, he 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 been doing it for a while now and he stayed relevant and consistent. And it's like, no, you just let him. He didn't really stay consistent. He didn't really stay consistent. He just unfortunately it's like the focus stays on the selected people. That too. Well, it's yeah. just it's just quantity. And and that we've talked about before too is like we're in an oversaturation 
mode. You know? Mm-hmm. Where it's more about just throwing everything against the wall and, and, and hoping two things stick. Yep, that's yep, that's how music that's how music being made now. As opposed to going out there like Aaron said, and like how Aunt will say tell Tanashi to go get a, a, a journal and go find herself. These motherfuckers <laughs> need to go get a journal. Go sit down with yourself. Have some chamomile. <laughs> Burn some stage or something. <laughs> Write it out. Write it all out. Write it out. Okay? Get with your producers. See who... Don't just go with anybody that's hot. Join up with producers that speak to the artist that you are. Mm-hmm. And that right. was the reason why 444 was good and why everybody was like, oh, 444. Because that shit was done in, a, in that way. And that, that shit is old school in a sense. But that's mm-hmm. what you're supposed to fucking do when you make music. Hip hop or not. Because right. it sounds, you know what I'm saying? Because, because you can, like, even without Jay Z telling us that, you know, uh, you know, he worked with No ID and No ID was the only producer he worked with or whatever the case may be without him telling us that we can listen to it and obviously tell that that album is more intimate and it's personal to him mm-hmm. yeah but but that's but that's why it's, why we why we liked it and why everybody loves it so much is because it is connected to something and it was worked on and it came from a place it didn't just come from I need to make this money You know, but hey, I mean, it's got to bottom out before it can go back to where it, you know, needs to go. And I think maybe we're at the bottom. You can never yeah. tell Hopefully. me, Dave. Hopefully. I look like the end of the '90s, early 2000s. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I will kill. <laughs> I will kill for a Nelly record. As well, you should be. Don't bring that shit up again on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Aaron are gonna tap dance all over you again. I I kill for a tip girl. <laughs> oh man, that bad. No, no, no. <laughs> Must be your ass. Tip girl, tip girl. I can't. <laughs> that shit so, has sliding well, ass credit yeah. cards. I so listening any day of the week. No. So listening to like um like uh Porter's Head and Massive Attack like you know because I know y'all been listening to it just as much as I have before the episode yeah. before the show. Mm. Like um like a lot of, like we talk about like the lo-fi you know what I'm saying like the traditional lo-fi sound of it. Um, yep. Is there a way, like, where, you know, like, sometimes in certain incidents that sound can be sped up and it's still the same thing? I think you could see Trip pop up. Cause, and, like, there's, in, with Porter's Head, there's, there's weird spaces in the music where they do speed it up. Mm-hmm. And they drop it back down again and they speed it back up again. It's, like, weird. Yeah. I, I feel mean, like yeah, I know it sound like Justin Bieber, though. Huh? No, I'm not. That's what I feel like it's gonna end up sounding like Justin Bieber, though. What? Yeah, that's another. That's another big difference I noticed. Where'd that come from? Let me speed it up too much. No, I think I think I get what Anthony's trying to say because, like, um, uh, like if you speed the song up, it sound it probably might. It's more likely to sound like uh. Poppy? Pop record. Yeah, it's more likely to sound <laughs> like a pop record if it's done if it's done wrong. I think though. Well. Anything is gonna sound crappy if it's done wrong. Look what <laughs> Trap did to Trip Hop. Yeah. I think if you speed it up and do it correctly, I think it would still, yeah, like maintain its aesthetics in a way. Because I mean, let's just talk about it. Like you're gonna, you're not gonna deconstruct it where you don't, where you leave out all the other weird sounds that you use. Right. It it might because like more cheaper in some places is more up tempo. A lot of post um, trip hop is not the same tempo. Yeah, that's why. See, that's why I was. Um, that's why I brought up that question because I was thinking mm-hmm. about like you know those types of sounds. But I noticed like in certain songs you'll hear like a, a 
it'll be like a sped up break beat in 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 the middle of a slow down yeah, break yeah, beat. <laughs> yeah. Which is which mm-hmm. is kinda dope. It is. I love it. That's like one of the reasons why I love and you know what? Another reason why I love trip hop is so eclectic in the people that that are drawn to into it to do it. All colors, backgrounds you know, it's 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 a it's like a a really multicultural yeah. arena. Well, yeah, that's like that's how um that's how hip hop is anyway. Um, kind of, kind of, but not as much as like you see a lot more people of a lot more different cultures and ethnicities and backgrounds. I think in trip hop than you do in hip hop, though. Yeah, I was thinking about that when I was watching uh. Star Wars, I think it was, and the white dude, like he felt like kind of left when he was like he was talking about they were talking about graffiti, <laughs> and he was like he was like well you know white people we graffiti too, and I was just like you know like I mean yeah they was there you know what I'm saying <laughs> like, like a lot of times um like you know people uh we don't we don't all we don't always you know what I'm saying bring them up or whatever for, you know what I'm saying for reasons mm-hmm. yeah I mean. Well, we, I mean, we do. We don't, we, we bring up Eminem a lot on this show. Yeah, for all the, see, I bring up Eminem just to prove a point for to people, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah <laughs> but I, I got it, because, because I feel like, I feel like a lot of people don't see that, like, a lot of people don't, you know what I'm saying, they don't have the same frustrations I have, like, with, like, the attention that he gets, like, he gets the same, he gets that kind of attention where it's like, you already know that if that was somebody else, you know what I'm saying? Like it would be, mm-hmm. it just wouldn't be the same. You know what I'm saying? And like it's even like it's not just him. Like I feel like it's other white artists that if they was to like uh, do stuff the way that he went about doing it, they might, you know what I'm saying? They might have a little bit more exposure than they do. I'm sure ASAP Rocky actually really could do that if he wanted to. Yeah. If ASAP wanted to to go pop fish, he probably could have done it. It's just, you know. <laughs> But there's a way to do it and do it well. And I'm not going to take away from him. Everybody is always dogging me when I'm yeah. to them. Like, why are you on air dogging Eminem every week? Like, Yeah, let's clear that up. I'm not, I don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't hate him. We don't hate him here. We just hate, we just, we hate, just hate the way, hate the way that y'all love him. <laughs> yeah, like, that shit, that shit is weird. You, you know what? I, and you guys know I respect him. I don't dig him because his flow just doesn't do it for me. But I don't take anything away from him as far as his talent. You know. Yeah, because like, talented. yeah, I was listening. I was listening to um Eminem show like recently and or whatever. And you know what I'm saying. Uh, I was thinking about. I think we had this conversation too. Um, like off air, I was talking about like the whole, you know, what I'm saying the whole gay thing. And yes, we got those taboos in black culture, but like, what's this? What's the song? Uh, I think it's the one with Haley, where he'd be like, "Me and Dre been fucking with hats off," and it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, all right, you know, what I'm saying like <laughs> he crossed he crossed those lines, and people are just like, you know, what I'm saying we know what it's all about, you know, what I'm saying yeah, you know the shock value of it all or whatever. But it's mm-hmm. like, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all gonna <laughs> give him? Yeah, you know I'm saying like he get he get all these type of type of prizes and like accolades. Like and, people and give him all gets, these props. He gets, um, not just that, but he gets passes to be able to do. Like, there's not a lot of like you said before. There's not a lot of like black, you know, men that would have been able to. Do what he did and say the things right, he said and right. be able to get away with it. Right, like At a lot time, of especially- people don't seem to get that when I point that out. When I point that out to people they don't seem to understand. I'm like, you can only go but so far with shock value when you're talking about the greatest MCs of all time. Like shock mm-hmm. value only takes you but so far. True. But, that, but that's part of why you don't see a lot of shock rappers, like traditional shock rappers, in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. But that's a but shock rap is a is a whole different show that we'll tackle one day. Um. So, and we can go to um, recess, and for recess we'll just 
run down some some really good um We'll just run down some really good artists for our listeners to listen to if they're out there trying to discover trip hop for the first time. And um, as we said before, like that first fresh wave of trip artists, um, you got to start with Massive Attack, Tricky, and mm-hmm. Portishead. Mm-hmm. Have to start there, okay? And then, and most of you have, you know, you got SoundCloud, you got Tidal, you got Google Play, you got iTunes. Once you type in those people, they're gonna start throwing like other people at you. It's like it's like it's like riding a swan on Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory. Right. <laughs> a whole so, new I mean, world of pure imagination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mean, you're good. Like, like once you, you, you know, once you, once you start with Tricky, they're gonna give you, you know, everybody else. They're gonna give you tons yeah. of different artists that you can listen so, to, like, like Rachi and Sneaker Pimp and Bjork. We did mention Bjork. Bjork is, is is on the is on the is, is on that early scene too. Like when I was listening to like the first place I ever heard trip hop personally is because RZA sampled a Portishead song called Over on his Bobby Digital album for a song called Kiss of the Black Widow. Mm. Shout out to my boy RZA for turning me. I wasn't I wasn't ready for that Bobby Digital album when I bought it. Yo. I wasn't ready. Get your mind right. But he also sampled Bjork. <laughs> RZA always sampled the like, like some kind of rock. You know what is so weird about that? It's like if you think about it, like really think about it, Wu Tang Clan is like early fucking ambient. It really is, though, isn't it? <laughs> but he did it his way, so it didn't come off. Is is like, Rizzo a precursor to Kanye? Nah. Nah, it's a little bit different with um, as what you're talking about. Like yeah. when you listen to like when you listen to records like Ice Warrior, where you hear that, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> that type of shit. Like that's that's something that like you would probably hear more so in uh, um, that that trip hop uh round. And plus, we think like like the music they have a out here and there, but they have the lyrics, right. <laughs> Yeah, their lyrics usually bring it back home. Yeah, they were like the big difference. The, the biggest, the biggest difference I noticed with trip hop too is that it's always like some like uh, their 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 front their front man or front woman is usually a woman. You know what I'm saying? And they um mm-hmm. and they usually singing yep. so. They are. Well, tricky, tricky does some of his own. He also has a partner um that he works with as well. And he teams up with he does that with Beth Gibbons is the lead singer um supported it. And she has that haunting thing that haunting sound. Made me think of Evanescence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kinda yeah, that's kinda how it usually go. Like Sneaker Pips got a uh got a front woman too. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's and, and most like especially like sneaker pants and like cheap, but they they have women in front of them, you know, yeah. um, women in front of people too. But um, I don't know because women always have some weird chick thing in the back. What's the love? Put some put like put some weird some weird sound in the chick thing you know, for some shit. Like singing in the back, obviously. What was that? I missed some of that. Yeah, me too. Hello?
But uh, what's like, what's like, what's like, what's like your favorite artist that you like her in? Well, have have either of y'all heard of a group called Nine Point? Yeah, yeah, I heard them. Are they considered trip hop? Yeah, because like they fall under on my music anyway, in my, in my library they come <laughs> under like alternative Hello? rock. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You hear me? Kinda. A little bit. That was weird. Okay. Um. <laughs> So uh, let me get out. I'll give about homework so we can. Alright. Um. So I, I'm going to the pop show. We hope everybody else will go out and listen to trip hop too, because trip hop is it's a blessing from God. <laughs> Who your favorite artist? Me. Yeah. Portishead, all day long. Like that's it though. <laughs> I mean, no, I like I like Portishead. I love Morchiba too, and I like Sneaker Pimps. But I and I I love all of them, but I love Portis Like I, I love a lot of different types of um, trip hop. I would but argue I that love Portishead. I would argue that um our like most intimate introduction, like our generation, like my generation, uh, mm-hmm. our like biggest introduction into it was like the Gorillas. Yeah. But the Gorillas is is so they kinda, they're kinda, they kinda they're kinda like hip hop hip hop adjacent. Yeah, they're like a sub genre of hip hop. Yeah. Yep, 'cause they yeah. did something weird with it too themselves. Which I respect that. I love the gorillas. Yeah. But we I feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of um people from our generation wouldn't even know how to pinpoint it if it wasn't for them though. Mm-hmm. I still think they can't because they don't even again they don't fucking know what they're listening to when they play trap. Like I'm, talking the, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the ones that go <laughs> Okay. You know the, the <laughs> you mean the, like um, y'all? Yeah, like the borderline <laughs> sociopath shit. <laughs> but they have like way of a like a a heavier like dance electronic influence. Right, uh, more so. Like, it's like, like they uh, lean into that. Less mellow. It's it's like Daft Punk meets Portishead. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like Daft Punk <laughs> meets Portishead. Right, Eric, right. get out of my head. <laughs> 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 but um, next week we're going to have the age-old is hip hop dead conversation. Lordy, lordy. Yes. Okay. I predict next week will get ugly. <laughs> uh yeah, you know. Um so we'll break it down. Dead in, dead in what sense? Cause if you listen to our show you've heard us reference the different types of ways it could die. You know. And what sense it's dead in and and even our origin shows we talked about, you know, what we call the little death. Mm. You know, like 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 the death of the origins. Cause in a way that those are that's partly the death of hip hop in a way. You know. Like folks don't want to see that, but it's it's kinda it's true. So um, I hope I can make, make that one upbeat because we really thought we were going to be able to be upbeat and happy doing our element shows, and that just depressed the shit out of us like that. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't. I really wanted theory. to be happy, it wasn't. I really wanted to be happy, <laughs> it just wasn't working out the way, and then Ant wasn't I mean, making it. The easier because it's, well, like, it's not like the it's not like the fuck. element. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. It's not like the element don't exist My funeral anymore. Clothes. It's just not you know. It's just not what it used to be. That's all. Well, that is what depressed us, Aaron. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think your ass that. is dark. Aaron is dark anyway, so. Yeah. Aaron's a Tim Burton character. He's a Tim Burton character. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, we all have our moments. Um, you know, I love trip. I was playing trip hop back when you guys weren't even like you were in elementary. So I mean, you've got to figure my ass is dark in a way. <laughs> you know, I'm listening to Portis talking about this shit is beautiful, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> it's but it's hauntingly beautiful. Trip hop is hauntingly beautiful. In an American Beauty kind of way. Yes. A paper bag caught in an updraft kind of way. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> A paper bag caught in an updraft? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking more Edgar Allan Poe. It's, it's you know it's, it's it's very Raven-esque in a in a in a never Moorish kind of way. Never Moorish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is it, 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 it do got kind of that. It do kind of. It do kind of got that. You know, like if if hip hop was like a uh, a uh, dark and gothic. <laughs> yep. That type hip-hop, of yeah. If hip hop was abstract art. Yeah. Well, it's like if. If hip hop were hip hop means um, Van Gogh, <laughs> hip hop means Salvador Dali. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Yo, you should though. you should explain you should explain your uh your your connection to uh your, your um the way you connected uh hip hop to uh, BDSM. Oh well, BDSM. well yeah, because I I was telling. Yeah. Uh, I'm um, telling y'all earlier when we were talking off air about how BDSM is a, a, a sort of deep and it's dark. And so trip hop kind of lends itself more to that. Like when I watched Fifty Shades of Grey, I was I was actually watching Fifty Shades and I was like, I was waiting for the trip hop to come. <laughs> <laughs> cause it, cause it, it seemed like it should have been there. Like y'all don't get that that should go together. But, but I never got it. I got the weekend, and I'm not a weekend is dark too. But mm. not dark enough for what I think BDSM really kind of like, like that music really captures the essence of. A BDSM. So I was thinking, like, then I'm watching, like, you know, Fifty More Shades or something, and I was like, okay, this will definitely have the trip hop in it. And yeah, no. So it's that it's that dark love music. It's that dark love music. And Aaron <laughs> earlier says he said, well, he said love is definitely deep and dark. Yeah. <laughs> Can be, yeah. <laughs> Like oh geez, you know I guess, but I don't know when you put it um, like that. I forced it. I I I'm I'm reminiscing on cinematic pornos now. You know what? But see, seventies and eighties had that weird nyet nyet kind of. Not seventies. Like, <laughs> <cinematic. laughs> Not seventies. I said cinematic. No, I'm so saying like the, like the like <laughs> the. I'm saying the seventies and eighties like like softcore porn had that nyan nyan weird kind of music attached to it. Uh, same you know. kind of vibe. Same kind of vibe. Right, right. But um, we do hope y'all join us next week when we talk about whether not hip hop is dead. That would be a lovely conversation. Nah, I said it is. And the discussion. <laughs> you know how much fucking flack Nas caught for that? <laughs> I mean, everybody was hurling shit. Like, little Wayne jumped on. Everybody jumped on him. People that had no business jumping on him, by the way. Right? There's a little Wayne. There's a little Wayne. But again, we will break down and explain what the fuck he was talking about. And we did explain it once before. But we'll we'll break it down even further so you understand the difference between for once and all between commerce and art. Okay? So that's a big deal. It's a big part of it. You know, because we keep talking about that and we want to make people understand it 
We don't want to beat you over the head with it, but at the same time, we kind of have to because the shit, because all this shit just sucks, and we and we're ready for it to stop sucking. So we're not gonna stop talking about it until it stops sucking. Mm, how about that? Um, so that's our show. Please join us next week. And school is officially out.